This is Kenny. He's making $10 million a year selling a product nobody thought would work. In today's episode, we break down how this daily mentor graduate is transforming Lego into luminous works of art. We break down how he came up with the idea. I've always been fascinated with lights, especially miniature things. He also reveals his revenue each year since starting the business. Year two, year three, we're seeing like 7% growth year yeah. on year. And the key to his success, it's in the community that he builds. You start following people, you start talking to them, tagging them. This is another Daily Mentor memoir. Tell me exactly what you do. I am the founder of Light My Bricks and what we do is essentially lights for Lego. How do the lights actually work? Customers will buy the Lego set, display it, then buy our product to retrofit into their Lego display to essentially elevate and take that display to a whole new level. And how'd you come up with it? I was a customer myself. I was buying Lego, displaying it, and then I've, I've always been fascinated with lights, especially especially in miniature things. Looked on the internet and what I found was either things that were way too chunky and big and you had to build around it. And what I wanted to do was basically create something for myself, but then it was very quick to identify that this is something that a lot of other Lego enthusiasts and people that were passionate about Lego displays wanted. So you went to the supermarket? Or no, I actually had a, a, a work colleague of mine at the, at the time who knew the Chinese market and knew how to source stuff. And all I did was just say to him, can you ask your suppliers how do you get small componentry that have connections on the end mm -hmm. that I could design a, a system? To so do. the lights kind of existed already as a component, but you tried yeah. to customize the kits yeah, in certain ways for them. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's just electronics. So you can find any of this stuff at electronic stores, but the problem is it's not um, produced in a system that is scalable and plug and play. You got the kit finally from China. Yeah. I'm sure it came in a box with a lot of sticky tape around it. Yeah, it's it. chaos. Yeah. And then what happened? Like, did you try to sell it? The first was just basically, think about all the different light fixtures on a Lego building. How do I put the lights in there and hide all the wiring so when you look inside, you don't see all these messy cables? That was the first thing I did. From there, I was like, all right, how do I document this process? Because the product is not just the lights, it's mm -hmm. also that instructions, mm -hmm. because that's a big part of that journey. And without good instructions, you got a shit product. So for me, it was like documenting that. And that was basically starting from the very start of a built set, documenting sections to remove, and then how I actually lay the cables in, connect everything, finish lighting the product. Mm -hmm. So that was the next step. And then after that, it was how do I package something, they're all the same box, but underneath it all is really just a, a different composition depending on the kits. And then it was social media. So social media for me is how people saw us. Purely what organic posts. So you're just Instagram posting. and Facebook. Yeah, yeah, so taking pictures of my lit up Lego, really yeah. posting it. And then I learned the trick of that community where you start following people, you start talking to them, tagging them, mm -hmm. and then they start seeing light my bricks and they're like, who's this? And they click on your page and you see all this light up Lego and they're like, ah, oh, cool. And that's how it grew and grew and grew. Welcome to uh, Kenny's Magical this is huge, Kingdom. Right? Well, this is kind of new. We've been here since July last year. Why don't you yeah. use a 3PL? We wanted to have control over like shipping stuff, yeah. at least locally. We could design a product and have it out that same week. Yeah. Whereas three pills, it's not like it's one product that you yeah. can just ship shitloads to. It's just like an evolving thing that just constantly. You can tell a lot about a man yeah. about his warehouse, and look how meticulous <laughs> this is, all on the yeah. forty-five degree angle. Yes, because we have over like. 300 SKUs, so yeah. we've got a lot. It's, a lot. It's, it's in some kind of alphabetical order. Your packaging is beautiful as well. Yeah, thanks. Like, well, I'm all about that customer experience. That whole unboxing experience is a, a big thing for me. And was, what's all this? So are you actually making, no, is this, you're so, making Lego to yeah, test the product? Yeah, so it's the, the whole thing is a light kit. So yeah. quite often um, a Lego set might have like a certain part that doesn't allow for our LED to go under it. Yeah. So we provide additional uh, pieces for them to be able to swap out and, gotcha. and allow for them to actually have the lights underneath. Mate, um, we've been here for four minutes and you've said the customer and like the, how yeah. above and beyond you go like Mate, 15 times already. It. It's yeah. incredible. How we've built a lot of our success is through a lot of well, other like-minded Lego collectors yeah. who have these massive displays and we're seeing an increase of not just men but women as well. That's great. Kind of like Lego was once this kind of basement thing yeah. where like the wires are like keep your shit downstairs but yeah. now with our lighting and even the direction that Lego are taking they're taking on this whole approach of bringing them out of the basement and onto yeah. the, into the living room and all that kind of thing so there's a huge audience in just adult collectors. Adults are the ones who 
have that pride of display and they have disposable income yeah. it's addictive to them it touches on like nostalgic themes such as like you're seeing like lego batman come out lego ghostbusters mm -hmm. stuff back to the future stuff that was huge in the 80s and they're releasing sets from now yeah. lego used to be for that you know typical nerdy introverted guy who's a bit geeky that kind of thing but now more and more people are getting back into lego and collecting stuff i'm tired sets. looking at that yeah like i just like adhd yeah. i would literally yeah. get the head on harry potter yeah. and then I'm well potter. people yeah and even the way people like un like build and sort pieces it's like a real thing on how they do it like i just take it out of the bag and just yeah. you know pour it out but some people literally sort piece by piece, color by color, and have it all sectioned out before they even start building. But most importantly, this is my my sacred place. This what, is did the, you play basketball as well? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge basketball. I have so. to have a shooter. I need industry standard. These are professionally graded basketballs. We'll go, professionally graded basketball court. We'll go one month free of Daily Mentor. He's gonna kill me. I'll, I'll, I'll double. Right, you go first. I'll double, I'll double fee. You wanna start small, do you wanna warm up? What's the, what, how do we win? No, it's just knockout. If I make it, then I'm safe. If I miss and then you make it after me, then you win. Oh, I'm gonna miss. We can give you a few warm ups if uh, you want. No, let's do it. Yeah? Let's do it? Let's do it. All right, I'll go first. He might, he might actually win, because I... On his home court. All right. Yeah, gonna win. Uh, oh. cool. I've warmed up now. I was secretly practicing, like nonstop since David got here. Oh, no! Got here. He's lost. <laughs> Oh wait, no, you gotta get that one. I gotta get Russia. this one in. Russia. Kenny! Yeah. Oh, that man. helped me. The content team that sit up there, we've got design, um, operations is like downstairs as well, so. How big is your team? Total, we've got 30, around 30 people scattered, mm -hmm. but most of the people are here. Yep. In this office, we have about 15 to 20. Who was kind of first hire, critical hire? Yeah. Like how does that work? Yeah, so it started with me, obviously me and my wife running things and doing everything out of my home. Just at my dining table, which was like this small, everything was just scattered around. I uh, had young kids at the time, so it was all about how do I just create this thing and just work, 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 because I had my day job and it was like a thing where I was really trying to prove to myself and my wife and family that this is something that I can make mm. huge and it's sustain long term. So I went from that and after about 18 months or so, my first employer was actually my wife's auntie mm -hmm. because we used to go to my in-law's place every Sunday and we literally have lunch, clear the, the dining table and everyone was all hands mm. in there helping me pack, test components. So we would test literally every component one by one before we went out the door. This is what the actual components look like. Can like, I take one out? Yeah, go for it. Oh wow. So this here, that will actually light uh, yeah. at the end. That will light up yeah. there. And yeah. different in that color. Yes, so. different colors. But then you can also put like a little brick on top of it to make it a different color too. Yeah. They're rolling it up into little packages. So some lights have like over 300 lights in it. Some have 15, 20. Every light kit is unique to that yeah. Lego set design. Yeah. yeah. Who comes up with a, hey, this Star Wars design needs this green yeah. light. Our design like, team. Design. Yeah. Oh yeah, it used to be me. Like <laughs> I used to be literally doing everything, yeah. but now we've actually got a team. We've built it out and we like, they collaborate, they do a lot of research on what, what is true to that like that, that Lego set rather than just slapping a bunch of lights and effects on it. This is like OCD heaven. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so you've got lights inside mm. here to go through the stained yep. glass window. Yep. And then obviously these would radiate yeah, on it. That's it. The Star Wars fan, you're collecting all these guys and once you put the light kit in it, mm -hmm. you kind of want to come back and go more and more. I've got more in here. So this is... Oh, this, this is, is Kenny's office. Nerd heaven. These weren't cheap. At the time, they were like $200, $300 a set. But Jeez. I had a young family, and um, you start having arguments with the wife over buying too much Lego. Maybe that's what you should sell, a free guide that how to navigate the wife. Yeah, how to win the argument with <laughs> the wife <laughs> of excessive uh, Lego purchases <laughs> is to start a, a Lego lighting company. So, so yeah, everything from like... Hello. What you can, do, whatever I could do to basically. So, what are the main secrets in like selling the product? Because mm. you're very good at organic social. Mm. What's the main organic like format that works? Is it just you assembling them? Is it tutorial? It's light seeing, without and with. 
yeah. you've got this, right? Can you imagine so all of this with no up. lights? Yeah, and then bang, it's on. It's like, yeah. whoa, it's like the value prop is right there for us. And what a lot of customers find is they'll buy one. Like, can you imagine all this with no lights and they'll just have one that's lit? Mm -hmm. Everything just <laughs> else just looks dead. Yeah. So for them, that's what keeps them coming back. And as long as we have a good that good journey, yeah. that's what we'll... And tell um, me about the business growth. So yeah. you've told us something about employees, but like revenue, mm -hmm. when you started, mm -hmm. first year, second year. Yeah, maybe. within the first six months of the business, I was actually making more money selling Lego lights than I was in my day job. So the first year, maybe turned over uh, maybe 100 grand, mm -hmm. okay? The second year, I don't remember exactly, but that's when year two, year three, we were seeing like 70% growth year yeah. on year. And it wasn't until COVID, so COVID was around 2018 where we really hit massive profits. I think we did about four mil in that, that period. And then from there, it wasn't until last year, I went through a big phase of trying to get um, hire the right people to, my, to be my team leads, to kind of help me grow the company and look after their areas. But it wasn't until, like I said, six months ago where I was like, all right, how do I go from 20% mm. to like 50? And that was when I started um, immersing myself in learning mm. and signing up to things like mentorships and coaching and learning from other business owners because prior to that it was all organic it was just me just of figuring things out myself because i didn't know anybody that mm -hmm. had an econ business or let alone a business it wasn't until then where i was like completely mind blown with all the lessons that i could learn and apply and see huge change mm -hmm. and so august was when i started applying everything and we saw like an 80 percent uplift from the year before by the end of last year we hit 10.86 mil so I was like, again, mind blown. I was like, imagine what I can achieve now going into 2024 with all these learnings, mm. all this guidance. One thing that I underappreciate about Daily Mentor when it's starting, because obviously I can give you stories yeah. and stuff like that, but the community, yes. you guys have all just started yeah. catching up with each yeah. other and talk, t sharing lessons. Yeah. So, and I think you've used a couple of other mentoring services before. Mm -hmm. What would you say the main difference between Daily Mentor is versus those? I think for me, it's all about that um, intimate uh, partnership and journey that you can have one-on-one -on -one calls and you can really have a way to apply all these learnings to your business because a lot of it is unique a lot of businesses are different and you can't just learn or watch a video and, and just automatically apply it there's a lot of tailoring involved mm -hmm. and what that's what I've really loved about daily mentor I've enjoyed jumping on the calls every Friday mm -hmm. with you and yeah hopefully we can get you to 100 million definitely so this is the design team in action so mm -hmm. this is a brand new set that came out Jan 1st it's a spider-man helmet and what these guys are doing are basically playing around with ideas on how to make a light kit for it a light design how do you make it look realistic to the film how do you um, not draw too much attention away from the Lego set itself? So they're just playing around with different lighting applications. Have you, were you ever into it when you were young? Nah, nah. nah? Uh, again, ADHD. Yeah. Right it's just like, I probably swallowed a few bricks. <laughs> That's about it. This is the content studio, one of my favorite places. Oh, wow. This is sick. Um, so a big part of what we do is our content, getting in front of people and- How big this is? Yeah, so this is the, ta oh look at that, it's Tall and Davey. It's one of our biggest light kits to date as well. Ooh. You can change between like RGB to static and all that, kind of like the real Eiffel Tower, you know how like every now and then it just does this crazy sparkle at night. The research on this sparkle is exactly like what it is mm. every, on the hour, isn't it? Yep, that's it. What's the best Stuff selling later. kit that you- Yeah, it was that guy over there. Just that one, that's- All good, I know it's funny because I think it's because nowadays with Lego, it's such a intrusive yeah, thing. Yeah, people have this in their living room or their dining table gotcha. or whatever. It is. And this is, yeah, this is where I throw things at staff yeah. and um, just yell at people. Just stare at them yeah. when they do their that's job. That's it, that's it. I, yeah. I do the finger. Yeah, you're nodding people, throw. <laughs> and you're doing over $10 million in sales now. What do you think like is the one thing in the past kind of two years when you've just gone shum, scaling through creatives and making the best content possible in order to be able to scale in through advertising that and i think it's really important to have someone who is across finances the biggest lessons was running into cash flow problems mm -hmm. that happened to me last year and i was like and that's kind of what drove me to learn more and mm -hmm. how do i really take the business from here to here. So you've done $10 million, what's next? What's next for Light My Bricks? <laughs> for us, it's just push, 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 20 mil, 30 mil. I think um, with everything that we've learned, especially in the last six months, 
we're going to apply it. So every month we have initiatives. We're going to be as proactive as possible. We're going to go more into product development, rebranding. That's a big thing we're going to do because for us, we're going to spend a lot of time and resources into that brand, going back to what kind of helped to, to contribute to our success earlier on mm -hmm. and customer. Like we want to improve uh, customer reviews and ratings and make that first time experience as best as we can. One of the most interesting things is like you solve your own problem and so many people do that for themselves mm -hmm. and then they're like, this would be a good business idea. Yeah. And then they never do it. Yeah. Like what would your message to the person that's watching this that is just like staring at their version of the Lego lights yeah. and they're just refusing to go into business? You gotta just put yourself out there. You just gotta do it. They resist because of fear mm -hmm. of something failing or it just not working out or what people will think and all that kind of thing. And I apply that to everything. I do not just a business, even in my personal life. But at the end of the day, you just gotta you gotta take that first step. And if you don't take that first step, that opportunity will just pass you. Do you think you were born that way? Yes, because for me, I've always had that FOMO. I hate it when something gets sold out. Mm -hmm. Like I hate it when I've missed that opportunity. So I've always had that instilled into me, but at the same time, as the more I've done it, the easier it's gotten. Mm -hmm. And quite often people just need to make that first step in order to, it, it becomes easier. You said, um, You've never dabbled too much in Lego before, but I it thought looks it, nice and simple. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is a Lego That's tranquil great. garden, and this is the light That's kit to go so with it. So zen. So I, I don't know. Yeah, if you ever get time oh, to beautiful, thank you so get your much, zen out, man. Um, have fun building it and That's lighting great. it. We'll see in the background of your videos. I know. I know <laughs> what room. I know what room to put it in. That's yeah, awesome. I appreciate sure. that. No thank worries, you. man. Thanks, man. No problems. It's been a good day. <laughs> I'm off to make some Lego.